long and intermediate trends crushing gold and silver commercials. The epic battle between the bears and bulls rages on with this completely annoying seesaw action, all dominated by the short-term interventions in the Japanese yen versus the U.S. dollar Chinese yuan. Precious metals expert Michael Ballinger discusses the tug of war going on between the Japanese yen and the U.S. dollar Chinese yuan and its effect on precious metals. I frame it as such because the yuan is pegged to the dollar and relations between the Chinese and Japanese are about as good today as they were in 1894 and 1895. Not much better than in 1939. Google search Sino Japanese Wars to observe their history of animosity. The good news, if there is any, is that a currency war was opposed to a boots on the ground war, and I'm convinced that a function of two large Cray supercomputers struggling to outmaneuver one another is manipulating the Japanese yen in one direction or another. The, Nap the Japanese would love to see the yen collapse against the U.S. dollar, making Japanese goods cheap in terms of both U.S. dollars and Chinese yuan. While placing the edge in international trade firmly in the lap of Tokyo, Beijing, however, wants the yen to soar against the dollar and the yuan, making Japanese goods less competitive and thus giving the edge to the Chinese. In the old days, these two agents, Asian gargantuans would be mining each other's harbors and blowing up foreign embassies. But since mankind has reverted to more civilized methods of international conflict, such as cyber warfare and space invaders style currency combat, the overt remains of conflict can only be seen on a Bloomberg terminal. The chart above overlays the gold price on top of the yen dollar going back to the top of the precious metals markets in late 2011. It's astonishingly how perfectly correlated the two are. The Bank of Japan has been working to diligently absolutely trash the pur purchasing power of the yen with QE to infinity policies and now negative interest rates but in the middle of last year, for some strange reason, the yen suddenly reversed and after peaking in late 2011 at over 1.30 at nearly exactly the point where gold topped, the yen has been moving higher versus the U.S. dollar. What's interesting to me is that these knee-jerk intraday movements in the Japanese currency do not look natural. They look as if someone is probing an exposed nerve ending with a cattle prod. To get a sudden 50 bip reversal within seconds of a new low or new high intraday price point is not only strange, it's dangerously bizarre. As many of the equity based pair trades respond by whipping the stock futures around like a kite in, the wind, in a windstorm. The bullion bank behemoths are doing everything in their power to keep the lid on gold and silver prices, but the longer we are witness to the resistance of my beloved gold miners, these egregious raids on, on the Crimex are more likely hood that this epic battle will be resolved to the upside. The Huey yesterday achieved a new high closing a new closing high for the move since January 19, and while it didn't take out the intraday high from St. Patrick's Day, it's within its hair's breadth of doing so. Since I have been a vocal proponent of predictive qualities of gold miners and telegraphing moves in gold, I would have really, I would had to really dig down and assess whether or not this wonderful move in my beloved miners is a simple valuation decompression coming off the absurd lows of January that were created by a forced liquidation within one of crude oil sensitive sovereign wealth funds. Was this move in the miners predominantly short covering or is it something larger with mammoth capital flows re-entering the sector? Take a look at the GDX 
shown below from a monthly perspective. The standout here is volume, and if one describes the old adage that volume precedes price, the fact that volume in March stayed incredibly strong is a testimonial to the efficacy of the move. Furthermore, looking at the histograms, you can see that the move could continue for months just to get those lines back to neutral. Bottom line, the gold and silver miners look spectacular. Okay. So the Chinese are breaking the Bank of Japan stranglehold on the dollar yen, and the miners look great. How does that speak to the actual metals themselves? Could we see a $260, 260 Huey and 1160 gold price? The Huey was incredibly underpriced in the latter half of 2015 with the financial crescendo of liquidation during the third week of January 2016. Everyone in the fund management business will use terms like regression to the mean or mean reversion because they like to have, the, like to have you think they are quants. But the reality is that gold mining stocks have less predictive value today than in prior periods because of just how compressed they got. Another way to look at the relationship between gold bullion and the gold miners is seen below. The gold stock to gold ratio or, gold or GLD to Huey ratio. The gold miners are on wheels again and this week with the Huey GLD ratio hitting new highs yesterday and again this morning as the junior miner ETF GDXJ which I have held since early December has hit a new high for the move and the year touching 3033 with the miners in gear and the dollar yen in retreat <coughs> excuse me one would have to believe that the long and intermediate term trends which I referred to back in late February with my article patiently climbing aboard the new golden bull have shrugged off the historically deviant effects of the commercials allowing the golden bull to forge forward showing ultimate disdain for the irritating gnat like bullion banks with a snort and a flick of the tail in that article I concluded with the piece I concluded the piece with this I see a sharp correction starting in mid-March with the severity of which will give me a clue to when and what and how much I will buy. To wit, the operative and critical thought to take away from this missive is this. I will be a buyer of gold and silver if the mining stocks into the next correction and the risk I take there is a correction. If I'm wrong, then this bull market will have a policeman turning in their badges and the bullion banks following the rules, both black swan events of the highest order. So in a few hours, we will get the ominous COT report, and while we eventually cannot bet against the commercials, I will be fascinated to see if they have been forced to cover by the raw paper behind Western investment demand and the dominance of the long and intermediate term trends in the interim. Let us celebrate the return of the golden bull and pray like hell that the sil like hell that silver can jump into the fray so that this becomes a real party instead of just an after work cocktail. Take care, keep stacking guys.